Hi YouTube, I hope you're doing good. I'm doing okay, not bad. We might have a little bit of noise, but we'll work through it. Um, I was listening to uh, Darren Stevenson last night. I wanted to comment to him last night, but we had uh, thunderstorms around here, and it disrupts my internet, so I had typed out a big, long comment for him, and um, I couldn't post it. It just kept trying to load and load, so um, maybe he'll hear this today. I'll talk about that video in a little bit here in my thoughts, but um, what I'm going to share with you is Iraq has a, a folklore about the seven towers of Satan and their beliefs that around these towers there's certain types of dark forces, um, satanic forces that can um, produce like apparitions and murders and all kinds of in this um, uh, Middle Eastern area of the world. And I've talked before on here about the um, mind to skull technique and the reason why they measure the circumference of your brain, your head, when you're born and you've got a number, they keep track of you, it's all electronic, has to do with the ley lines on our planet and their geometry knowledge on how to implement things within electricity and the ether around us and what those masters that wield that dark energy are actually capable of and the groups of people that will get together and wield these energies it goes as deep as as using the water using trees using the rebar in great um interstates and rail systems um it's not just the towers in the Middle East anymore. It's these skyscrapers. It's the old technology that they used to have with spires on top there. This is all conductive energy that can be used against people. It's real. It actually is a thing. And this is what I'm trying to get people to realize that this um, like, like, when you know, like, say you have a bad thought, is it really your thought? It's not yours until you run with it. That dark thought is never initially a human being's. It only becomes yours when you accept it and move on that. Say, like, if, um... I mean, yeah, it's natural, like, we're not going to like everybody, and there's there's times that we may have bad thoughts towards another person, but I'm talking about deep, dark, um, like, the dank thoughts, you know, that that your mind might go if it were to um, progress any further than that. Then, then you're accepting of the dark force that is being laid upon you. And this is how it's done. These people are masters at mind control. And that is what they do. There's, there's groups of people that do it. But how they do it, that's another thing, is what I'm trying to get to. Um, get you to understand with this what I'll share with this. Um, oh, I, I, you'll see the name of the um, channel on it 
when I when I share it for you. I, I had run across it and I thought I've made like three videos maybe explaining these ley lines and the techniques. There is even like um, in Memphis, Tennessee, there's a replication of the Great Pyramid in Memphis. What is that doing there? Why is there another one in Nevada, in Las Vegas? I mean, these things, people don't really, really um, think about it, you know? Why? Uh, are they conduits, you know? Are they there for a reason of um, that energy I'm talking about? Yeah, that's that's exactly what it is. And and people will argue with me. Well, that's that's the compass in the level. Shut up. It's a protractor. It signifies the circumference of your brain so that they can use this technology on you. As you grow, they can, they can um, um, estimate the growth of your skull with age. Yeah, they're masters at it. That's what they do. Do you think those bad thoughts coming in at you um, were your creation? No, they're not. That's what I'm trying to get people to realize. That bad energy isn't yours until you act upon it. You know? So anyway. Well, Darren Stevenson was sharing a video with uh, 007 from A View for a kill, I think it's called. I wasn't a great big 007 fan, but this one had um, Grace Jones in it. I did like her, you know, back in the day. She started out as a model when I was actually um, modeling. <laughs> so she was kind of one of my, I didn't really aspire to be her, but I saw what she was doing, what I, what people wanted me to aspire to be, which wasn't really my thing. But, um, yeah, she was cool back in the day. But the song by Duran Duran, um, and, and I don't know, I guess, yeah, the, the, oh, what am I trying to say? Anyway, I can see the the quince that aren't coincidences. I can see the the um, programming of what they do in films towards us, not really for us, but at us more. But he was talking about a nightmare that he had, and when I was a kid, I had this reoccurring nightmare. If you've been here long enough, about four or five years ago, I think I spoke on this. But um, I was mountain climbing with my brother in my nightmare. And he cut my gear. And I ended up stuck in between these two peaks. And he wouldn't help me. Well, kind of, that was really symbolic for what he turned out to be a... Uh, uh, child um, sexually active with children of the same sex, baby, or whatever. He doesn't care. He's, he's a dark entity, controlled by the dark entity. But anyway, um, my adopted brother, not my blood, but I used to have this nightmare quite often. I haven't had for Oh, a couple decades, probably at least now. Um, but it was really freaky. Like when, I think the last time I had it, um, I went to see the movie Cliffhanger, if you remember that, with Arnold Schwarzenegger. Um, 
yeah, I didn't like that movie at all. That reminded me of my nightmare, you know. But I wonder, and I've wondered this before, with the way they can conduct their crafts um, in groups, whether you want to call them covens or, or lodges or whatever, whatever you want to, you know, in their tents, wherever they are, these people that get together in groups. I wonder if there is a pattern of different nightmares that they will, um, like, put out in the ether or put out towards certain people. I wonder if there's actually, like, a template of nightmares that they'll um, try and inject in another person when they're vulnerable, like when you're, when you're sleeping and... You could think, well, you know, like it's three o'clock in the morning somewhere on the planet all the time that there's people up in the middle of the night with the dark force working towards other people on the other side of the planet continuously. So, and yeah, it's, it's one great big dark cabal worldwide and just like people are starting to get the idea that our governments are all related. They've never been separate. These wars they wage with each other, they're all pre-planned to control the people. They're, th those world leaders only care about their self. And they actually do care about the other world leaders, not because they're compassionate, because it suits their plan to work with each other within that dark cabal. And that's what they do against us, you know. So. Anyway. So I think you will find it in interesting. And it is not just folklore. It's not. These dark force energies are a real thing. It's not imaginary. These things that are put into our minds in our waking hours or in our sleeping hours are put there. And once you realize that, it's easier to stop that from, from gaining any kind of foothold within yourself. You know, so anyway... Supposed to have more rain coming in tomorrow. It's been an awful soggy summer so far. <laughs> so anyway, cheers everybody. Just a minute, it's pretty full. Anyway. I was going to share um, some information by a doctor and a professor of... Um, uh, he's a philologist and uh, a classical literal, literally, uh, literary um, doctor, professor, Carl Ruck. If you haven't heard of him before, maybe I'll share a video of his tomorrow or something like that. Um, I might have shared one in my community last week. Uh, it was an older one. I had ran across some of his um, work, but I mean, I've known of him for quite some time. He uh, um, was always interested in working with uh, like psychedelics with people with uh, neurological diseases and um, manic depressive and that type of thing and um, how it could actually be used as a medicine and why our governments would make certain things that could actually help people illegal you know so he was um, one of the front runners in uh, people's personal care through drug use things that our government say, oh, well, you can't do that. But then we all know that 
what it might help with or not, you know. So I don't think a government should be able to control anything in our lives. You know, that's on a personal level, you know. It's just like prostitution. I don't agree with it, but I think it should be legal. I I mean, no, I don't want anything to do with it, but I still think that if two consenting adults, as long as there's no children involved, do whatever you want to do. As long as you're not doing in public, I don't care. Does anybody else, do you really care? I mean, <clears throat> if you're worried that your spouse is going to go seek um, somebody they have to pay for their pleasures, let it go. <laughs> for real. Let Give it money to go. <laughs> you know, buy. Have a nice life. You know? Why would you care? If somebody has urges outside of your marriage and it's no longer sacred, it never was. Let that shit go. <laughs> you know, ish. You know. So, and if if somebody wants to uh, um, drink themselves to death or um, shoot stuff in their veins or whatever they're doing, that's still their choice. You know, as long as these things aren't around little people, it should be absolutely legal. I'm not saying that it should be legal for these people to be hanging around on the street corners doing whatever they damn well please. No, I don't feel like that at all. But I still believe they have the right to do whatever they want within their own lives as long as they're not hurting somebody else, you know. Same with men that cross-dress, like if they want to wear lingerie. Good for you, buddy. But if you want to go into a library and dress in erotic costume in front of little people, I've got a major problem with you. And I would actually be physical if I could. I would in that extent otherwise I really don't care as long as you're not out on a street corner trying to deceive little people you know or trying to get personal with them there's really no reason why a man would ever want to dress erotic in front of a child unless they had ill intentions other than that I could care less I really don't and if people want to call it love, well, if that's your idea of what makes the world go around for you, that's not the same world I live in. It's not the same world God created. But if you believe that it is, have at it. Doesn't mean there aren't any consequences for people that... Um, walk on the wild side with ill intent towards other people. As long as you're not doing that, I don't care. You know, I, I made a video and left it up for the queers. It's, I don't care. I have gay friends. I have gay relatives. Do whatever you want to do as long as you are not trying to influence anybody else. Then I can I can love you. If you're trying to influence or sway somebody else to your manner, then I have a problem with you. If it's going to cause ill intent for anybody's humanity, then I do. And I'm standing on it. And yeah, then it is um, a physical thing towards somebody else. Then people have a right to feel like that. Otherwise, I, I would never, ever approve of, like, physical contact with anybody. But I, but I know, and you should know this too, if I saw you dressing inappropriate around a little person,
I have no words for how I feel, but I think you can get the drift. Other than that, there's not a not a mean bone in my body. There's no no type of um, initial violence that is there unless it's brought out in me. If you bring that nurturing motherly instinct out of me of protection for little people or somebody in danger, then you brought something upon yourself that wasn't there initially. That's my reaction. See, it's just like accidents. They don't just happen. They're caused. Cause and effect. You could say, well, it is it's not hurting me. And you can you can say that. You can say, I am self assured that nothing I do is going to cause harm to Barb. You sure about that? Anyway, so if I feel like I have to protect myself or somebody else, I'm going to do that by any means, is what I'm saying. And you're going to deserve what you get, too. Other than that, if it's all due respect towards other human beings, I'm down with that. Like I say, if you're not trying to sway the youngsters to your mode of thinking, which doesn't um, enhance the natural family, or if you just stay out of the way on the down low of what is healthy, then I can be your friend for real. And I would defend you in all extremes except towards the children or the mentally handicapped. I've seen that too, where people have uh, treated the mentally ill heinously. I put a stop to it one time. I saw this, well, more than once, but... Um, <clears throat> there was a group of men in this very small town I lived in, out in Montana, called Judith Gap. It was in between two great mountain ranges. One you could see up into Canada it was called the Bob Marshall Wilderness, and the other one was called the Gap, Judith Gap Mountains. I lived out in the mountains, and I had a friend in town named Jerry, and his parents had died, left him the house, but and he could drive and everything, but he had the mentality of about a seven-year-old. He went with a group of people into a bigger town, and uh, they took him to a whorehouse. He was mortified. He told me about it. He was like, he was so freaked out. He, he didn't recover. He totally almost cracked, you know, his whole life, um, he was on disability, and his parents kept him a little bit secluded, but his whole life, really, the biggest thing he loved to do, he loved to read, and he loved to fly fish for trout, those two things, and um, the, his level of innocence was like nobody I had ever met in my life. And what those people did to him was so disgraceful. They were laughing. They thought it was funny. That really hurt him. This man was crying about it because it hurt him that bad. You know, but they thought it was funny. I didn't think it was too funny. So anyway, as long as people aren't hurting other people like that, you know. Well, I mean, I had my father and my children take my children, adolescent sons, to a whorehouse. So I guess, you know, it can happen to healthy people too, but it's really not good for children. 
There's times, yes, I wanted to be violent. It took all my strength not to do that. I don't think he's watching me, but if you're watching me, I still want you to drop dead. But anyway, I don't wish it every day, but occasionally. And there's times I actually wanted to um, help him along. Not just for that, for far more severe things than what I just mentioned. Some of you know the depth of the of the horribleness. But anyway, I'm not talking about a normal human being at all. So... <laughs> Well, what does everybody think about these uh, so-called Olympic Games that would allow men to actually compete against women? How do we feel about that? Well, I've spoke on it before. I think if any male ever wants to lay a hand on a female, he deserves to die. Women and children, that's off, that's off limits. You can dress up like a woman, but you don't have a woman. You don't bleed. And that takes a lot of energy out of a woman. Our skin is a couple, two, three layers thinner. Our bones aren't as dense. Our muscles aren't as thick. We all know this is true. Yeah, there's some big buff women, but and there's some that probably take testosterone, but you know, to be forced to compete against a man in your own sport, that's disgusting, you know, and I don't know why, what would be in some man's head that he f would feel like there's any kind of justice or righteousness or any place for him in a woman's sport. You know, anyway, so God give women these, these strength to battle these regressed human beings, you know, God give us strength. And the men that, that honor women, God give you strength too. For our families, you know. I'm not saying like all cross-dressing people are or transgenders are hateful. But you have to think of the depth of the sickness behind it. And actually, even within that illness, whether they think they're becoming some kind of hybrid or some type of experiment, actually what force is controlling them or you, whoever you are. If you're not hurting people, which ultimately it does damage the psyche. I mean, you can't see something like that and not be affected by it. So whatever your goal is, it's regression. And that's not hatred. Like, I I just got through saying, if you're a righteous person not trying to hurt anybody, I would defend you. But if I got one glimpse of the darkness in there, and I'll dig it out, because it's there, I will dig it out. I'll prove this. That it's not mental illness, the same as with a narcissist. It's your lack of control of the evil within you. That mind to skull technology, you embraced it for the dark force against what is righteous on this planet. And I'm out for justice for the natural women and children and men on this planet. 
just put that in your pipe and smoke it whether you like it or not. Because that's the reality of life. See what happened actually was uh, sorcerers, your source gives you those abilities over natural science and biology that will always prove itself through. But without the ability and the knowledge of um, the reality of a true science, but willing the wielding the dark energies that they use against people for that dark force that wants to destroy everything that is good. So, well, I'm going to get this uploaded. Uh, check out that Seven Towers thing. Think about what I'm telling you with the ley lines and everything. Now it's such a big network that the dark force can use in the ether with electricity towards you and those fleeting thoughts coming and going within people till you master that for yourself and realize where that's coming from and the people and then pretty soon you're going to envision the faces behind that and then you're going then they're caught then, then you have mastered that over yourself and for other people, and you'll be able to speak to it, you know. So, okay, everybody, I appreciate you joining me. Have a wonderful week ahead. I love you all. Peace from Pine City, Minnesota, USA.